Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to focus on systems of equation. And no, I'm not talking about the two methods of solving system of equation, you know, substitution, elimination. I've done that in a previous video. I'm going to put a link in the description down below, but psh, we're ignoring that for now. Today we're going to focus on the third way of solving system of equations. Now, this is unofficial and here's a caveat. It works for a majority of the problems, but there are certain problems where just trying to solve it this way, right, will make the problem a lot more tedious than necessary, especially if you can solve it the other two ways. Now, this one is basically involving cheating the entire system, right? You're not technically solving it in terms of mathematically, like writing through equation, trying to find variables, so on and so forth, but you're actually reasoning through it. And this third way, I know a lot of us has done it before, but we've never put a primary focus on it. It was only when I designed questions, like, and you guys can guess, like word problem questions, with the purpose of testing students on elimination and substitution, that I had this third way thrown in my face. Basically, when I designed those, expecting them to use one or two, they ignored it completely. They just reasoned their way through the problem and they answered it correctly, 100%. So of course, you know, being the fair instructor that I was, there was no way I could duck point and I wouldn't, right? It was clever, it was amazing. And they solved it, they answered it correctly and so they scored very highly on it. I'm gonna show you some of these system of equation word problems and another way of solving it, just by cheating the system. So let's begin. All right, so for our first problem, we have this right here. Bob shot a total of 42 shots in a basketball game. He scored a total of 90 points. Assuming each shot is worth either two or three points, how many three-pointers did he make? Okay, all right, so what do we have to do in this situation? Normally is what well, we have to find a system of equations, right? We have he shot a total of 42, and each of those shots are either two or three points. So, what we can say, x is our two pointers, and y is our three pointers. And then after that, we start figuring it out, right? We know that x plus y is the total number of shots, which is 42. And we also know that, what do we have? That, well, since it's worth two points every shot and three points every shot for the y, we know that after all, their total point is 90. And then you try solving it from there, right? What you would do is, well, if we wanted to use, for example, elim elimination, what we do is we multiply everything here by negative two and then here by negative two and then what we get is we have basically minus two x minus two y equals negative 84 and we have our original two x plus three y equals 90 and then we add them together the x cancel out the y ends ends up being just y because three y plus two y or negative two y is going to be y and then 90 plus a negative 84 is just six. So in this case, y is our three pointers, which is six. And then of course you can also find x because what you do is you get 42 minus six, you get 36. So he shot 36 two pointers and six three pointers. And then you would answer the question this way. Now, that was just going through the system of equations, solving it, what you would normally expect with a problem like this. Well, guess what? There is another way to just reason through it. We see that, again, Bob shot a total of 42 shots, okay? And then they're either gonna be two pointers or three pointers, and he scored a total of 90 points. We're just trying to find how many three pointers he made, right? As long as we figure that out, we're good. We don't have to go through that exact process to solve this. Well, let's just make an assumption. Let's say, assume they're all two pointers. Okay, this is just my way of thinking and then um, you can follow along, so I'm gonna write it all out. Assume they're all two pointers. Well, if that's the case, that means 42 times two is just 84. That's not good because guess what? We want a total of 90. How many are we missing? We're missing six points for this to be 90. Well, guess what? 
if we change some of them to three points, every time we change a two pointer to three point, we're adding another point. Well, if this is missing six points, that means we just need to change six of these two pointers to three pointers and that will give us a total of 90. So just like that alone, without having to go through any of the system of equations and solving it that way, we know that the total amount of three pointers he made, pointers, is six, which saves us plenty of time. Let's look at another one. Jane buys a total of 15 marbles. Red marbles are 20 cents and blue marbles are a dollar each. Okay. She spent a total of $7.80. How many red marbles did she buy? Now, this one, yes, you can solve it with system of equation. Once again, we can rewrite the system of equation. We know that um, red and blue, right? Let's just say R is the number of red marbles plus B is the number of blue marbles. And then we know that that's a total of 15. And we know that each marble is worth, well, the red one is gonna be 20 cents, so 0.2 R plus, and then each of the blue marble is $1. It's gonna be one B or just B, right? And then if you add them all together, it should be $7.80, so 7.80, which is great. I don't really want to solve it that way just because, eh, I mean, it's decimal as well and then we got to do all the multiplication and all that. But if we just reason this out, we can actually solve it without doing that. Once again, we make a basic assumption. Let's just assume that she just bought all red marbles. Forget the blue ones, right? She just bought it all. Uh, well, if that's the case, if all 15 marbles are red, then we can at least do some basic stuff, right? 15 times 0 0.2, what is that? $3. Okay, well, that's not really how much she spent. She spent $7.80. Well, what happens if we change that? Instead of assuming all red, let's just assume that, okay, let's say if she got almost all red. Let's say 14 of them are red, right? And if that's the case, that gives us, uh, what is that? $2.80, but that means one of them is gonna be blue. So that means gonna be one times, and the blue one is just $1, it's just one. Add them together, right? This right here, 2.80 and $1 is gonna be $3.80. So from here to here, when we change one of the red marbles to blue marble, we're actually increasing, right? Let's just draw an arrow so you know, increasing by 80 cents and we can keep on doing it just increase again increase again increase again until we get 780 or we can do at least something a little different we know that the difference between well 780 and three dollar is four dollars and 80 cents is the difference right that's how much we're missing to make sure that she spent seven dollars and 80 cents well Every time we change one of the red marbles into a blue marble, we're increasing it by 80 cents. Well, if that's the case, figure out a number that 80 cents times whatever number it is will give us 480. Well, in this case, it's six, right? So we know from here, that means we had to change six of the red marble to blue marble. How many red marbles did she buy? Well, six, I shouldn't have boxed it because that's not really the answer, right? Six is blue. Well, if that's the case, and she bought 15, that means 15 minus six, because well, total number of marble minus six blue will give us the red marble. And in this case, it's just nine. So this is the actual answer. Let's box this and write real answer right here. All right, let's look at one more. Now, this one, even though the wording and everything is just completely different, right? The structure itself is actually very similar to the first problem. In a bike lot, there are 12 cycles. That includes bicycles and tricycles, right? If there are a total of 34 wheels, just basically wheels in general, I don't know why anyone cares, right? But if there are a total of 34 wheels, how many tricycles are there? Well, once again, make a basic assumption. 12 cycles, what if they're all bicycles? Well, if that's the case, bicycles only have two wheels, hence, you know, the name by, right, bicycle. Uh, 12 times two is 24. So there would be a total of 24 wheels. Well, that's not enough because we want 34 wheels. Well, 34 wheels and 24 wheels, the difference, what's missing is just 10 wheels. 
We know that tricycles, three wheels, if we were to change any of the bicycles into actual tricycles instead, then that means we're just increasing by one wheel. Well, if we're missing 10, we can guess the number of tricycles is just gonna be 10, right? 10 tricycles would allow this number from 24 increase to 34. And just like that, without even doing any math, maybe this a little bit, and the whole 10 difference, right? We solved this problem. No system of equations needed. All right, so hopefully at this point, you realize that this method is sort of, yeah, cheating the system of equations, right? So unless when you encounter problems like these and they have in the directions, you have to use system of equations, you have to solve it either with elimination or substitution. All is fair, right? Because guess what? It's a problem, they have a question that they're asking you. And as long as you can answer the question through some logic or explanation, you know, don't randomly just guess. But as long as you can explain your reasoning, right? I mean, you're not wrong. There's really nothing they can do about it, which is amazing, right? Hopefully you guys got that. So thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.